Um, is there anything else that you guys want to add uh, in terms of interesting facts that came out of this tri uh, trial that you weren't expecting? I don't think it's too much of a surprise to anyone, uh, especially again anybody kind of in the know. But there was the the official confirmation that Xbox's consoles have pretty much been selling at a loss, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and they've been making their profit on games and I'm guessing services like Game Pass now mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. like Xbox Live Gold. Um, I did find that interesting though to get like the official, like the word from the horse's mouth confirmation. Right. Yeah, um, I don't know what you guys think of that. I had, I had, you guys called me crazy before when I said that eventually Xbox is going to be stepping out of the console market. But now we got some numbers to prove that that might be sooner than we think. I think that they're going to look at integration instead of like creating their own consoles. They're going to start trying to integrate uh, into different systems. They're going to integrate into smart TVs. Um, either that or because think about the profit margin. If all of a sudden it's not an Xbox, you just have a USB dongle. You plug it into your TV. It connects to the Internet. You Bluetooth connect to controller and you got Xbox Game Pass right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's definitely possible um, that we could get other like types of, I guess, per I don't even know what they would be called like that. Those services or like a mini console peripheral yeah. like yeah. um, add ons. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we'll see that as soon as you think, Malik, you, you are very hopeful. Um, but I think with Stadia and how Stadia performed, you you bet that Microsoft is taking their time um, yeah. with how streaming services will work and making sure that's perfected before they invest money into hardware um, that mm -hmm. promotes that more and more. Um, but yeah, I found it interesting as well. I feel like everyone kind of knew, but like you were saying, Caboose, like we just got that confirmation. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think it's shocking at all. I, I think it's very interesting. Um, we we know what makes uh, Xbox, sorry, so special, and it's the services that Xbox provides, uh, be it Game Pass or cloud gaming. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just how it's just seeing like where we are on the graph. Like as the years go by, we have PlayStation that's here selling those triple A's, and Xbox is just coming up here, and then sooner or later we're gonna see that switch right so it's going to be right. interesting to see how gaming really evolves from that yeah well it's yeah i i 100 completely agree with you camille i think i'm more on your side of saying like well i'm sure x microsoft is looking at ways to introduce like peripherals and supplemental dongles or whatever just to add into the ecosystem but i mean X Microsoft and Xbox hasn't made a profit on consoles in 20 years. So if they're not, if they haven't been concerned in 20 years, they're still not going to be concerned in the next 10. Uh, I think all this does is confirm that Microsoft yet again is just a software company. That's yes. that's what they're known for. They they don't care about hardware. They'll give it to you. They'll they'll sell you hardware. But that's not the end all be all. And I know that. You know, going back to the quote unquote console wars and everything, that's going to lead them to look like the losers most of the time. But look at what they're doing with their their services. And that's how they're going to get uh, their market leadership in, in some regard is by introducing gay pass and getting people to subscribe to that yep. and introducing more people to cloud gaming, whether it be, you know, on your phone on a TV at some point in the in the future or hell even now you have it on PC too so you don't even have to have a high end PC to play premium Xbox games anymore mm -hmm. so I, I i think that's where the the future is but i still think that there there will be an Xbox console in your living room for the next foreseeable future yeah yep yeah i think yeah. i agree with that yeah, I absolutely um agree with that as well it'll be interesting though because like what what would be that changing uh point for them right to say I, we're not going to offer a console anymore because personally i think the reason they've been doing it is so xbox is still a brand that they could sell um yeah, without right. a console even if they still offered game pass as it is right now as xbox is right now not as many people would be talking about it because unfortunately this toxic idea of the console wars still gets people talking about xbox um, mm -hmm. you know, it might not always be in the positive light, but they know what Xbox is because of yep. this fake idea of a console war, right? Um, I think if they weren't to offer a console anymore, it now just becomes something like the Epic Game Store. Um, another service that is just offered, we're not talking about it as this, 
huge powerhouse gaming brand. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think the sorry, go Billy, so, go no, please go. I was just gonna say if if the you know the rare metal shortage and then the processor shortage and the supply chain shortages get worse and That's Xbox true. can't see mm. a uh, or Microsoft can't see like a reasonable way for them to continue production and. St- to, like not lose as much you know what i mean because there is also man hours that go into you know developing consoles if they're not even going to be able to like make consoles because there's just not enough resources available i think that's when we start to see that shift but like you said they they need that they, they always no matter what no matter what form e3 takes xbox is always going to be one of the big three they, they yeah. need to make sure that that happens always. They need yep. to stay in that big three conversation. Mm-hmm. So whatever way they do it, um, I think it's going to be beneficial for them. But like you said, though, too, Xbox and Microsoft could just evolve because they are te- they are really just a software company. They could brand it as them evolving beyond the need for a console, still offer cheaper consoles, but put a focus, you know, towards some of these other services. But like you guys had said, internet service providers and with Stadia, we saw that streaming isn't always viable. So it's going to take a while. I think that there's so many external factors um, that are going to play into like the decisions that Xbox makes. Cause it's not yeah. just a, it's not a supply chain shortage. It's not just that they're mm-hmm. losing money. There's so these, all these other X factors. Well, X one, factors. W- yeah. X factors. I like <laughs> that. Uh, well, one thing that I think, you know, obviously Microsoft never expected this, to, the pandemic to happen, chip shortages and all that, but they, luckily kind of thought ahead where they're like we're not going to have xbox exclusives or next gen exclusives for at least two years Mm -hmm. so they they don't really need to rush out these these new consoles because xbox one and xbox series or xbox one x are still going to be supported for the next little while well Um, even i'm just going to add quickly before you continue even the series s right i think maybe that is slowly a transition to an affordable hardware that we will just only offer years down the road Mm -hmm. rather than a full fledged graphically like, you know, capable hardware. Um, But the plus side is when you buy this affordable hardware, you get all these services, right? So. True. Yeah. And I just wanted to go back to to your question, Camille, of asking like, when is the time? And I think, or at what point does Microsoft start to look into introducing just solely like a peripheral or something like that, get away from the console? And I think it comes down to two things. And one would be the infrastructure of the internet. Obviously that's gonna play an important role. And I think the other one is time. And I think we have to be at least a couple more generations away from the Xbox One before Xbox is even considering doing anything really risque or taboo in the industry again, because was, they're, they're still trying to get over their like DRM <laughs> policies that they tried to do and everyone was like, excuse me? Yeah. And then they kind of just had to do like a 180 on that. So I think that, yeah, with that and Stadia now going through its own hurdles and everything, I think Microsoft is playing the, the long game and just wanting to play it safe. Mm-hmm. Plus yeah. it's, it's important to know as well, Sony, like it's not unheard of that, you know, a company will have a loss with hardware. Sony's mm-hmm. has had that um, too. So, um, I think that's interesting to kind of like how we all just pay attention to the fact, oh my God, this is Xbox because we think Xbox is so hurt that they are so behind right. on this console yeah. war when yeah. really it, it's not too like out there to actually lose on hardware. Because what? if you think about it, it is a huge investment to make this device that is so advanced in technology um, and then mass produce it obviously you need games to make up for that yeah mm-hmm. well i think the the other thing that goes into it is that almost maybe maybe i'm wrong here but almost every single console that comes out is sold at a loss when yes. it first comes out even the playstation 5 xbox series yeah. x right now everything but hardware innovations kind of let them make that up in the future so that they can offset that but i i just think it's kind of interesting that xbox never got to that point or never wanted to to begin with maybe they're just so focused on just getting the hardware out there they're okay taking the loss because they have so much money which is crazy because we keep saying where are they getting all this money buying out studios like having so much value in game pass for like basically nothing i i would i i don't know i think i think it also just comes from you know 
everything else Microsoft does. Yeah. From Windows 10 to like all their like business initiatives and stuff like that. Like I don't think, and people can correct me if if I'm wrong in the chat and everything. I don't think Game Pass is profitable yet. So they're not making yeah. any money mm -hmm. off of that service. So it has to be coming from other revenue streams like Xbox Gold or everything else that Microsoft is handling. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that, because Camille, you had asked previously, like, was there anything that came out that, like, really surprised us? I didn't realize that Apple's extent to controlling monetization, not just in gaming in general, if you download Netflix on your iPhone, you can't sign up for the service in the app. You have to go to a web browser, s sign up, put in your payment information, and then you can go back and log in. But we also oh, see that with yeah. games like Hearthstone because Activision Blizzard's properties, they kind of run in their own uh, little uh, program or they have their own like ecosystem. You have to log into your account online, purchase them through either like the Blizzard uh, or Activision uh, kind of web browser or the desktop app, and then it applies to your account. That's a there, There's so many extra steps with microtransactions that I didn't even realize that ios people had or ios mm -hmm. players or gamers i should say yeah it's it's crazy like just how when you're sitting through something and you're like oh my god why is it opening another web browser for me to like sign into this yeah we yeah. just think of it as like how it's interfering with the user experience but it's all business <laughs> it's all about yeah. making money behind the scenes that's all it is and who gets that money yeah it's so sad. Yeah, it is sad. But, you know, <laughs> so if anything, we still got a week left yeah. to figure out what's going to go down. Well, and that's the thing. I feel like up until this point, if anything um, really came out of these Apple trials, uh, Apple and Epic trials, it's the fact that Breath of the Wild 2 may be coming closer than we expected. And everything is about money. That's the only takeaway. <laughs> Biggest takeaway. And everything is about money. And money. Yeah, yeah, and everything's <laughs> about money. But who knows? That may change depending on who this trial lead um, ends in favor of. So mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see. And, you know, when that results in, we'll be talking about it right here. Uh, but that's it for us today. For now, um, I'm just going to ask each and every one of your lovely faces, what are you guys up to? What can we expect and where can we find what you're working on? Uh, I'm playing Injustice again, which has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of that over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash caboose. But also, you know, DC Fandom, they announced the second one. It's coming later this year in October. I'm sure we're going to see some stuff from Suicide Squad and Gotham Knights there. So you can definitely expect more coverage on that on my channel. Plenty of content to come. YouTube.com slash Caboose once again. Um, got some fun things coming as well related to some Mortal Kombat tournaments. Can't talk too much, but keep an eye out on my socials, Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. Awesome. How about you, Malik? So I am going to be writing. So No Man's Sky just did a pretty big, uh, another big update. I'm going to be writing an article um, talking about why No Man's Sky is the best uh, space experience out there. Um, you know, a lot of things like accessibility versus realism, uh, continuous content updates, you know, paying to paying to play like you get with Star Citizen, but mm -hmm. all of that stuff. But after this, I will be streaming playing the new No Man's Sky update. And then nice. my article will be up tomorrow. So you can go check that out over at the website. Uh, squadstate.com awesome thanks malik and steve uh yeah usually you know i i'm always directing people to to check out stuff that i i'm in the process of writing or, or publishing but i actually want to redirect people to something i published last week because we didn't have a a show last week but i did a uh, i was invited to a pretty in-depth behind closed doors uh preview for ratchet and clank rift apart nice uh, with insomniac games so i got a to hear a lot of new details on the story, the tech that's going in into the game and all that. So yeah, if you guys are really excited for the game, I know I am June 11th, but uh, yeah, go to squadstate.com. You can check out my article there as well as just follow me on Twitter at svegvari. Look, I know I, I know I work for the site, mm -hmm. but but the most comprehensive Ratchet and Clank rundown. I read yours, I read IGN's, I read GameSpot. None of them compare. You did a great job oh, with that. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> thank game. you, thank you. I yeah, it was, it was just it. really cool to uh, to hear them talk about um, talk about the game and just hear about like 
so many cool and interesting little tidbits that you wouldn't really think about. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait to read it. I, I'm I looking forward to it. I feel ashamed I did not read it yet, but I will because I'm excited for Ratchet and Clank and I'm looking forward to playing it uh, when it comes out. Uh, as for me, well, I just did a stream this past weekend for Covenant House raising money for a good cause um, and I'm looking to do another charity stream. Uh, plus, I'm working on a, a few things I can't talk about. So, I don't know, just follow me for memes on my social. <laughs> this is Camp Co everywhere. Um, yeah, I saw, I saw that you did that. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, yeah that, that was great um, working with the Covenant House and stuff like that. Yeah, fantastic work, Emil. Yeah. Love thank it. you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but be sure to tune in right here because every Monday we talk good stuff in the industry. And if you have any ideas of what we should talk about, please hit us up on our Twitter at Squad State. For now, thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you next time. Peace.